it, it's little Cain, he, he broke one of the dolls and all the heroin spilled out. Damn it! Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you for one of my famed movie slash Blu-ray reviews. Today I will be reviewing the movie and the Blu-ray of... Revenge of the Ninja. As always, I'll review the movie first and then I'll review the Blu-ray. So my history with Revenge of the Ninja goes all the way back to when I was 12 years old. I mentioned before in my review of uh, Enter the Ninja that a childhood buddy of mine uh, basically shared a lot of violent movies with me when I was, I don't know, 9 or 10 years old or something like that, by the likes of which were Commando, Rambo First Blood Part Two, and American Ninja. And when I saw American Ninja at the age of 9 or 10 or whatever, I was like, oh wow, this is freaking great. And I was instantly just ninjatized. It's funny looking back on it how how big, you know, kind of ninjas were when I was 11 and 12 years old, but, uh, or ninja movies and ninjas were to me at that age. But I only really, I was only really aware of American Ninja, and then when I was 12, I, I rented Revenge of the Ninja. So as a kid, I really pretty much only watched, you know, American Ninja and Revenge of the Ninja. I did see American Ninja too, but honestly, I was never a big fan of that at all. I think it really pales in comparison to the first film. The first American Ninja, I think, is is really great. So American Ninja is one of the two ninja films that I pretty much kind of grew up with from the ages, of, around the ages of 11 and 12 and such and um, it's like I said in my Enter the Ninja review it's basically the second film in the kind of the three film trilogy which start with you know which starts with Enter the Ninja and then the second film this film I'm going to be reviewing Revenge of the Ninja and it ends with Ninja 3 the domination and as I mentioned in my review of Enter the Ninja it's really kind of goofy that they consider this a trilogy, all films produced and just, you know, released or produced by the Canon group at the time, they go on to be become more of a power player in the mid to late 80s doing much more ambitious projects like Missing in Action, Invasion USA and um, the Delta Force and movies like that, but the early 80s kind of was the, the beginning of the Canon group, but as I was saying, it's just so weird to me that they consider these three films a trilogy because the, pretty much the only through line that I can really think of is just Sho Kushugi or Kashogi or however the hell you say his last name. I'll just say Sho Kashogi. He's pretty much the only thing that is you know can be found in all three films. So apparently this is really amazing. This is uh, Sam Furstenberg's very first action movie. I can't imagine it's his first movie in general, but he said on the Blu-ray that it's his first action movie. And for me, it's just really just unbelievable to, you know, it's just unbelievable to me because I regard this movie as, you know, especially for the time. I mean, the action, in my opinion, holds up really well now. But at the time, I mean, the action in this movie must have been really kind of fun. I mean, it's really kind of fun now, so I can only imagine what it was like back then, but it's really amazing to me to think that this was his first action movie. He would go on to do, you know, direct American Ninja, and I think American Ninja 2 as well, and other canon films, I'm pretty sure, and um, I think that what he did in this movie is amazing, but admittedly he said he had a lot of help from, you know, crew members, you know, more soiled and veteran crew members that were, you know, on the film. So, to be fair, he probably got a lot of recommendation and, and help from editor, you know, cameraman, and just stunt people and everyone involved with the production. But uh, it's really, really impressive, uh, this being his first action film, because I hold it in relatively high regard for just being kind of a, a cheesy early 80s ninja action movie. Story of this film is very straightforward. It starts in uh, Japan where there's this group of assassin ninjas that basically just attack this kind of village or this, this house or whatever the hell you want to call it and kind of kill off all the family of, it looks like family maybe and or family friends of the Sho Kishogi character. Uh, one of his sons, I think his wife is killed. The son is killed and I guess the wife just gave birth to uh, you know another baby boy. And, you know, that baby, she, during the ninja siege, she hides that baby in the, in the bushes or whatever. So that baby would, uh, would actually ends up surviving and is a, 
you know, kind of a crucial, you know, big character in the film, which is really funny. And incidentally, just so I don't forget to mention it, that, you know, we cut to so odd, so odd the years later or something later, you know, nine or ten years later, and the, the, the kid that actually plays shows, you know, I think his, his character name is Cho, I think, so it's like C-H-O, and it's his real name Cho, which is kind of funny, but the character that plays shows, you know, actual boy in this movie is his actual real life son, Kane Khashoggi, and uh, I think he, they just, to make it easier maybe for the kid or whatever, they just use his actual first real name, you know, that is Kane in the movie, his, his name is also Kane in the movie, but really cool, fun kind of ninja assault, you know, assassination of his family scene at the beginning, as much as it's not fun to see, you know, kids being killed with Chinese stars in the forehead and old ladies and, and women just, you know, shot with arrows and sliced to bits with swords and ninja, ninja weapons and stuff. I, I, I can still remember, I just ate it up as a 12 year old. I was like, yes, because, because, you know, this, 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 um, I'm pretty sure that this is the artwork that was on the VHS cover. And I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Ninja Mayhem. That's all I needed to see to, uh, to be talked into renting this movie as a 12 year old ninja fan. I was just like, when I was 12, I just wanted a American Ninja didn't quite, you know, as much as I love American Ninja, I needed more Ninja action and that cover was all I needed to rent that movie and uh, and when I saw the beginning of this movie I'm like oh wow you know it pretty much not that I paid for it at 12 years old but pretty much covered the cost of the rental you know the rental amount just the opening scene with the ninja siege on the, the little uh, Japanese village and you know killing of all those <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing about it because it's not you know in the movie it's not true it's all fake and they're actors and the blood's not real and you know, I, I, I just see on the little view screen my, my smile about, you know, the, the fact that this whole innocent family gets slaughtered. But at any rate, um, you know, Sho, who is, I think his character name is Cho in this movie, actually, you know, obviously being a proficient in the art of ninjutsu himself, he was able to actually kill all of the ninjas that killed everyone. He was away with uh, his kind of American partner, uh, at the time of the assassination, he, he arrives right afterwards, and in, in, or you know, not not actually not after. Well, after the after everyone is killed, while the other ninjas are still there, and is able to dispatch the ninjas single-handedly, which is just a, like I say, the opening scene, in my opinion, because um, as you know, if you saw my review of Enter the Ninja, that that movie doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of ninja action. Like in my opinion, the first scene with the ninjas killing everyone and then show killing them in this movie is is more action packed than the whole of enter the ninja in my opinion it's just it's just that cool and maybe you know part of it might be me seeing it through the lens of a 12 year old very possible but i still think i just rewatched this not you know a couple days ago and I still think that the action, ninja action in this movie is just great. But uh, after Cho, you know, dispatches all of these assass ninja assassins that killed his family, all except for his, you know, newborn son and his mom. His mom survived. I don't know if mom was there or if mom was with them. I can't remember. Regardless, mom, mom survived. And this American friend of his suggests, you know, oh, you better come to America you know, because it's just a matter of time before one of these ninja siege assassination attempts actually kills you. And he's like, okay, let's take Braden's advice and go to America. And, you know, and his mom is like kind of opposed to it, I think. Like, you know, you were born here, generations of your, you know, family or whatever, uh, died, lived and died here. And it's kind of like the Braden is the American kind of quote unquote partner slash friend is, uh, I think it's Braden. If it isn't, that's what I'm going to call. <laughs> and uh, he's like, his, you know, let's take his advice and go to America and be a better life or whatever. So that's what they do, and it cuts to whatever, you know, nine, eight, nine, ten years later. And it's so funny because this movie is just chock full of freaking action. It seems like most of it is action, it, and, and it, it's just amazing to me. So when we cut, and I'm, I'm trying my best not to do a beat by beat, but I'll simply say when we cut back to, you know, America, nine, ten, eight years, some odd years later or whatever, it's like his son is walking home with his, um, you know, with the son's grandma, and uh, the, the, these they, they kind of crossed paths with these bullies, these you know little boy bullies. I don't think they're even teenagers. Maybe some of them are, but some of them aren't. And just kind of school age 
bully kids and they attack them and the little, you know, Kane, the actual real life son of Sho Khashoggi actually kicks their asses and stuff and Cho goes like, you know, after he kicks their asses he's like, no, you do not, you know, use your ninja skills. And Grandma's like, well, they attacked him, and it's all this and that. And I gotta tell you that there's so much like ninja, ninja kung fu, you know, kung fu, kung fuery, and ninja, and you know, just you know, just whatever. You just martial art stuff and kind of action scenes in this movie. It's just so freaking fun. So basically, the plot of this movie is when he's in America, the the show, you know, Khashoggi character, kind of like moves to America and sets up this like little shop of I guess selling Japanese dolls or something like that and kind of seals up his ninja sword and you know meanwhile I th oh I think he's also like a, a you know a, a kung fu instructor or something like that but at the mean at the same time we see him like seal up his ninja sword and these you know traditions are from a bygone age and we only practice you know kind of kung fu or whatever ninjutsu just to honor our tradition and he seals up his sword and his weapons and puts it in a box and this and that and he has his obviously you know him being pro you know actual shokushoki being proficient in ninjutsu and martial arts and stuff he he raised his real life son as can be evidence in this film he kind of has his son show off his little um, you know martial arts techniques in this film as well and it's really pretty cool to see honestly just see the I mean that's that's one of the cool things about this movie is that it's his real life son in the movie showing off his, you know, martial arts, you know, stuff that he's learned at this age of being however the, I don't even know how old he is in this movie, 9 or 10 or something like that, it's hard to say, but there's just so, I can't, I can't stress how much like, you know, kind of martial arts ninjutsu stuff there is in this movie. It seems like there's more of that than there isn't it. It's just like, it seems to be like scene after scene. But anyway, uh, I'm getting a little long-winded here. The, the basic premise of the story is, you know, he moves to America and sets up shop and kind of seals up his ninja sword and, and then there's this, uh, we quickly find out that his American friend Braden isn't a good guy and he's kind of like, a, you know, he's actually using Cho, which is Shokushogi's character, he's using that business of the imported Japanese dolls to actually import heroin in the smuggle, the, you know, the heroin inside the doll. So he's kind of using Cho for, you know, his drug drug trade and you know smuggling drugs into the country and <clears throat> he's selling the drugs to this I don't know this these Italian mafia or something like that and they're not ready to you know he wants to you know the you know the bad guy Braden wants to make the delivery but they don't have the money right away and he wants the the kind of Italian mob boss doesn't pay him when he wants him he starts you know the bad guy who's also kind of proficient in ninjutsu and martial arts and stuff, having spent a lot of time in Japan himself, that's how he knew Cho, um, he starts assassinating, you know, members of this, uh, basically Italian mafia gang that's, you know, the head boss guy isn't paying him when he wants to be paid, so he starts assassinating members of the, ma their, you know, the Italian crime, the Italian mafia gang, and it's just kind of like, it's really kind of cool how the, uh, you know, it's kind of like I mentioned in the, um, my review of Enter the Ninja, how the main star in that one was the Caucasian Ninja. I actually, you know, this is my favorite of the three, you know, kind of trilogy of ninja movies, and it's kind of cool how this is the one with the actual kind of good guy is Sho Khashoggi, and the actual good guy is Japanese, and the bad guy is American. I kind of like that versus the other way around, which it was in uh, kind of you know, enter the ninja. So I prefer this way where Japanese guy is the good ninja and American guy is, is the bad ninja. So that's the premise of this film. This movie being shot, I want to say, in Salt Lake City. It was the same place that uh, Don't Go in the Woods, incidentally, was shot in. And there's a guy from, kind of the deputy in Don't Go in the Woods is actually a very, very, very small role. He has a very small role in this film. If, you, if you're familiar with Don't Go in the Woods, the original film, you, you might recognize the deputy from that film and this film is like one of the bodyguards, I think, of the Italian mob, you know, boss situation. I think he ends up getting like axe, ninja axe hatcheted in the head towards the end of the film, but I can't remember if he even has any dialogue. It seems to me he might have some dialogue, but he can be seen in a couple scenes, um, you know, being a bodyguard, so that was kind of fun. 
Oh yeah, I don't want to forget to mention that during one of these scenes where the evil bad American ninja is killing off, you know, members of the, you know, Italian crime boss drug family or whatever, one of the younger, one of the younger guys who's, you know, naked with some chick in a hot tub or jacuzzi or whatever, and, you know, making out and <laughs> presumably doing whatever, I, I won't get into details, but uh, he gets... Yeah, I think both of them actually. Oh yeah, he gets uh, blow darted in the in the back of his neck, and she gets, you know, drowned by the you know ninja sword pushes her under the water and stuff. But during this scene, incidentally, I don't think it's the the visual that you see on the TV, but they put the audio of a scene from uh, another canon film by the name of New Year's Evil can be heard in this scene. It's supposed to be coming from the TV, but as I said, I think the images on TV in the scene aren't from New Year's Evil, but the sound definitely is. I can't remember who the hell it is who um, wants the dolls. I guess it's probably the Italian mob boss who wants the dolls, you know, stolen at the, uh, you know, at Kane's or show. What, what's his name? Cho's. Cho's freaking, you know, doll shop or whatever. No, because he probably knows the drugs are smuggled inside, but I'm pretty sure he's the one who has the, uh, it doesn't really matter. At any rate, at some point, the the dolls, there's a siege on, Ch on Cho's doll, you know, museum or, or store, or whatever the hell it is, and this scene is so freaking funny when he sends this one Indian guy and these other kind of white trash guys to, uh, you know, and he's like, uh, yeah, he tells the Indian, like, if anyone gives you any trouble, scalp them, you know, or whatever, and it's just, yeah, okay, so yeah, it is the uh, Italian mob boss guy who sends these guys to go steal the dolls from Cho's place or whatever and you know they're they're almost done with it and Cho comes in and, and sees this happening and I gotta tell you I mean I, 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 granted it's, it's part it's you know most likely like I say seeing it through the eyes of a 12 year old but just having watched this a couple days ago I mean this scene is so freaking great and it just seems to go on on and on and on and on and on where you know Cho's trying to you know thwart these these thieves and stuff and they end up taking off in their little old beater freaking uh you know van and stuff and there's this chase scene where he jumps onto the van and then he's fighting them in the van when his van's driving he ends up hanging from the door out this out the back of the van it's just it's just done so well and i also you know thinking about this scene reminds me of the music how freaking awesome the music is in this movie and what's so funny about this kind of you know canon group ninja trilogy is there's music that's you know basically that was in Enter the Ninja can be heard, some of it can be heard in this, and I think some of this music, along with some of the, you know, Enter the Ninja music can also be heard in American Ninja. I'm not so familiar with Ninja 3, The Domination, I'll be watching that so I can stop on by to do a review of that, but it's possible that some of the music from, you know, Enter the Ninja in this film as well is in that. I shall see when I give that a rewatch, but the, the music in this movie is also really, really awesome and, you know, such a great kind of, you know, Eastern, you know, martial arts, ninjutsu kind of music to go with the, the, the action scenes. But the scene of, you know, this action scene of, you know, them trying to steal the dolls from his place and him just kind of just trying to kick their ass and stuff while they're driving in the van and him hanging out of the van, you know, at the end. And it's just so, it just shows his character's determination to you know, not let these guys win. It's just so freaking great. And by the time they escape and he actually ends up, you know, falling off of the, the van being dragged and his legs are all, you know, his pants are all just torn up to shit from being dragged on the pavement and stuff. I mean, when he gets up out, you know, off the ground and he's all bloody and bruised and battered, I mean, it's just so freaking badass. It's like, way to go, Cho. And then if that scene isn't bad enough, but I think sometime like during that scene where the, the bad guys are stealing from the, uh, you know, Cho's doll house or doll store or doll museum or whatever it is, the other, the American, you know, the American bad guy, Brayden or whatever, in, dressed in his ninja garb with his little kind of silver shiny, I, it's like a kind of a, I don't know, creepy dragon face or something like that, which is a fun gimmick, um, you know, that they do so. That you know, this guy, whenever bad guy, kind of Braden or whatever, American bad American ninja who thought he was his friend, partner guy who was using Cho to smuggle in drugs, he goes at the same time the the place is getting ripped off. He goes into Cho's place to, and actually I can't remember what he went there to do, but whatever he went there to do, you know, he ends up killing his mom. And it's funny because his mom actually kind of fights him for a while and is this 
a double that does like a you know somersault or backflip and thing and it's kind of like they really cut it in well to make it look like this older woman is doing this stuff and she is doing some of the stuff you know and it's it's really just so cool because this movie not only is like Shoka Shogi doing really cool ninja you know martial arts stuff but his son is a little child and an older woman is doing this stuff so that's why this <laughs> movie just throws up a big huge smile on my face when I think about it and talk about it because you've got kids and older women doing martial artists martial arts in this movie and it's so fun but imagine you know coming back all bruised and battered and bloody from trying to thwart these thieves coming back to your place to see your mom you know hanging there in the martial arts room you know with a sword through her and it's just like oh my god what a horrible day for Cho that that could have been an alternate title a, a, a really shit shitty week for Cho you know that could have been uh, you know revenge of the ninja or Cho's shitty week. At some point after the death of his mom, Cho, you know, teams up with this kind of, you know, you gotta have the, like, Caucasian, you know, American white sidekick guy This kind of, I guess this guy's a policeman or something like that. I want to see. He's always got a, t a teacher it on with police or something on it. I think he's a policeman or something. But uh, I guess, I think this guy kind of instructs people in the police force on martial arts or something like that. But there's this funny-ass scene where they go to just, I, I can't remember, I, I guess they, they just go to interrogate these 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 criminals hanging out at the playground because they, they think he, they might know something about the, the theft of the dolls and stuff like that. So there's this fight scene that, you know, is so freaking awesome that takes place at the uh, at this playground and they, they interject the playground, you know, some of the, it's a really cool playground with just, you know, all these this and that to go up and down and slides. People get their ass kicked and we they'll be then they'll slide down a pipe slide and just land on the sand on the bottom. And just be like, oh, I mean, it's just it's so freaking funny. You could take like one of the action scenes in this movie, in my opinion, is pretty much better than all of the action in Enter the Ninja. That's why I give I gave Enter the Ninja kind of so much of a hard time because. The action in this movie, I mean, it's just like there's so much of it. And actually just talking about it now, even though I watched it less than a week ago, I just want to watch it again. This is, this movie is so freaking great. But if you haven't seen it and you're into like 80s ninjas or even if you want to see if you could get into 80 ninja, 80s ninjas movies, I got to tell you, even probably over as much as I love American Ninja, this movie is just so insane with its action and just kind of kung fu, kung fu -ery and the places it happens, like I say, you know, martial arts with young kids, with young older women, martial arts at playgrounds, you know, dragon from van. I mean, it's just it's just so insane this movie, and I just can't recommend it enough. The 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 fight scene at the at the playground with the hoodlums that for whatever reason hang out at the playground is is just so funny. So getting to the close of the movie review portion of this video, the end of the movie finds, just like kind of with Enter the Ninja, the woman gets kidnapped. Well, in this case, it's not the woman who gets kidnapped. Oh, there is a sexy blonde in this movie who's really, really kind of sexy and obviously, you know, enhanced breastage, but I'm not going to complain about that. Some enhanced breastage goes better than others, and I'd say her enhanced breastage worked out very well, but she's a, she's kind of a, I don't know if she's a student of Cho's or something, or a part, or, you know, a help router or an employee or whatever. But she ends up being hypnotized by by Braden, and they do this funny gimmick where you know he's got the the ninja outfit on with the the metal metallic plastic mask underneath, and they do this thing with like green light where he's like hypnotizing the the big titted blonde to you know basically kidnap Cho's son Kane to you know for whatever reason I don't even know why they want to kidnap him, but they kidnap, you know, it's funny how he hypnotizes the big-titted blonde to, you know, kidnap the son, and then when she brings him back, both of them are kind of being held ransom. She's, they do this cool setup where they put her in this, like, hot tub, which is, like, only, like, half full, so, you know, the, the water is below the jets, so when they turn on the jets, and she's tied up in there, like, it's shooting it all, like, in her face, and it looks like it really hurts. Like, God, that's, that really, it's kind of a cool gimmick for, like, a torture device you know chain you know tie someone up in a in a you know jacuzzi kind of a thing that was just half empty and then when you turn on the jets you'll be spraying the person right in the face it's really kind of nasty but i i, I want to say that guy who's in so many of these movies you know professor tanaka i can't even remember his name i know his, his name starts with professor you know that kind of just big 
big kind of just guy who's like, ha ha, he's just like really thick and all this guy. That, that guy can be found very briefly in this film. I swear in the 80s you'll see him in pretty much every other freaking martial art movie ever made that guy. I want to say Professor Tanaka or something like that, but I always wondered why the hell, why the, hell the word professor was, you know, in, in part of his name or whatever, if he was a professor in, you know, pain or, you know, bringing the hurt or what, but uh, that guy can, I think, I think it's him, I think can be found um, in this movie very briefly as well. And obviously, Unlike the, you know, Enter the Ninja, which one of my complaints, one of my many complaints would be about that film as much as I, you know, don't want to sound like a pig. I mean, let's face it, I mean, these movies are about ninjutsu, kung fu, and tits, and no tits, you know, sexy chick to be found in Enter the Ninja, but alas, no tits. At least we get, you know, and it's not obviously a very sexy scene where one of the people who's holding the big-titted blonde hostage towards the end of the movie kind of rips off her whatever, lingerie, I don't know why the hell she's wearing lingerie at that moment, but, you know, so we actually do see her enhanced tits, which are, which is fun and stuff like that. And there's actually a scene in the trailer that's not um, in the movie where the trailer is also, uh, you know, part of the Blu-ray. There's a scene in the trailer where she's, like, in that lingerie and pretty good tit shot and stuff. I mean, not, not, not full-on tit shot, but cleavage, you know. So uh, it's a bummer that scene was cut because she looked hot in that shot with the lingerie on, but uh, just, just to let you know, there is the all-important brief little bit of uh, tittage in this movie, which, you know, just adds to its, its, its worth, I mean, just tremendously. So obviously the fact that, uh, you know, Cho's son is uh, kidnapped and the blonde bimbo, who I don't think he knows, oh yeah, he, she calls him at some point, sneaks a call to Cho and says, oh my god, Braden hypnotized me to, you know, kidnap your son, I did it, oh, I'm so sorry, and I gotta say, that detail is really kind of fun, where usually the bad guy or will have another bad guy or a henchman kidnap someone for him, and by having, you know, basically hypnotizing kind of a friend of Cho's to uh, kidnap the son for him was really kind of, you know, kind of creepy in a really cool way, as he not only you know, like I say, she, you have the big-titted chick kidnap the son and then she'll bring him back and then she'll be held ransom along with the son when they both return. So that's really a fun kind of plot point. But obviously, you know, this event of his son being kidnapped leads Cho to, you know, un, you know, break the seal that he put on his katana, ninja sword, and, and get his box of ninja weapons out. And he opens it and it's this light inside and there's this whiff of smoke that kind of comes out of the ninja weapon box where all of his ninja weapons, katana, you know, a couple side, you know, shuriken, you know, ninja star and all this other this and that are housed and uh, he obviously suits up for, you know, ninja on ninja action. At this point the blonde big titted chick told, you know, told Cho over the phone that Braden's the, the bad guy, he's not a friend, he's using you He's the bad ninja, so it's good ninja versus bad ninja. I gotta tell you that that bit at the whatever it is, the freaking church or whatever Buddhist church or whatever the hell it is, where he suits up and does this thing and all the finger motions and this and that, and he's like, Wah! and there's just wind and shit. It's so freaking epic, and I gotta tell you, I mean, I mean, like I say, you know, just taking one of the action scenes on its own is pretty much you know enough to worth the cost of entry into this movie, but by this time there's been so much freaking crazy fun action, it's just like, now it's like, okay, well here's the rest of the movie, 15 or 20 minutes worth of the, the last 15 or 20 minutes of this movie is just nothing but kind of like, um, it's, it's, it's a mixture of like the, the Braden, the bad ninja, trying to, um, I think, to break into the, the mob bosses, you know, high rise or wherever the hell they're staying or whatever, and so, so it's it's a combination of, of Braden, the bad ninja, trying to do something to the mob, and then, you know, Cho, Cho, Cho who's Sho Khashoggi's character, trying to kid, or, you know, re, uh, rescue the um, the big-titted chick and, and his son. And I can't even remember, are they both, are they all located in the same building? They must be. But, but uh, yeah, they, they must be. But it's this cool thing where it's a combination of you seeing Braden, the bad ninja, and then Cho, the good ninja, kind of break into this building and it's really just kind of unique usually I don't know it, it's what's so cool about this is the bad guy has an enemy in the mob boss and I guess Cho has an enemy in 
the bad ninja. So it's like usually the the bad ninja doesn't have another enemy in this, in, you know, in a movie. So it's really cool how the bad ninja has an enemy, and then the good ninja's enemy is the bad ninja. So that's just really kind of cool. And it just makes the end of this movie fun. So, I mean, it's like both ninjas have to break in to, I guess, if I'm remembering correctly, the, the same building where, I, I don't know, whatever. I, I don't know why, you know, the bad ninja has to break into the building where he's keeping the big-titted chick and his son hostage. I don't know. Don't, don't, I, I can't remember every single detail, but I'll simply say that the last 15 minutes or 20 minutes of this movie, I mean, the, the first, you know, first hour's already been amazing, but then you got the last 15... 20 minutes of this movie just so fun you, you know Braden when he's doing his ninja stuff there's this really cool scene where you know it's kind of like almost you know world trade you know towers twin towers Braden basically ba breaks into this high rise by there's a building right next to it so he you know he, he shoots a he shoots something into the concrete on the next building and he attacks, attaches a wire and somehow able to go from one building to the next and it's just this I mean it's just like it's in, in, it's nonsensical and kind of goofy but it's just there's so much like cool ninja tools that are a part of him doing this. He's got this cool bow and arrow thing that he uses and this other cool thing, grappling hook and this and that. So he kind of, you know, t follows a line from one building to the other really high up and just breaks into a window. And I mean, there's just so much cool just like infiltration stuff that, that happens at the beginning of this movie as bad ninja and good ninja are kind of infiltrating this building. It, it's just so fun. Obviously, you know, at some point, uh, you know, the little uh, Kane, the little son of Cho, is is in the in the in like the sauna or whatever, and he's all he, he's all tied up with the rope, and he uses the the heat coming from the rocks to to break the rope, and he ends up kind of saving the big titted chick out of the the, the you know the the jacuzzi or whatever that's slowly filling up with water to the point where it's going to drown her and stuff and. She, he saves his big-titted blonde captor, you know, the woman who kidnapped him, which is so funny, but she was hypnotized, so you can't blame her. But it, it's just so fun, all this stuff going on, and of course there's the ninja showdown at the end, you know, on the top of that building, and I want to say it's Salt Lake City, I, I think, and I, I gotta tell you, it's just so freaking amazing, and, you know, I, I can't remember if I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I had the VHS of this, because then the DVD came out in, like, I think 2004 or 2005 or something. That was the very first time I saw the extended cut of, of the death of, um, you know, Braden at the end where he, he, he kills, stabs Braden and slices him or whatever and his blood just pours out of him. That was the very first time I'd seen that, his, his death with the blood shooting out un, uncensored. And luckily that's, that same version can be found on this, uh, this Blu-ray as well. What can I say? Obviously, big-titted blonde chick and son you know, rescued at the end, bad ninja killed, and I'm pretty sure Braden, yeah, Braden probably kills the mob, head of the mob boss guy before, you know, he gets killed, so his enemy is, is vanquished. That's just a really unique, like, the more I think about it, it's just, that's a really unique aspect of this movie. You know, bad ninja's got an enemy, he kills him, good ninja, you know, good ninja's enemy is the bad ninja, so after bad ninja kills his, his, his enemy, good ninja kills bad ninja, and, and rescues Big Titted Chick and his son. It's just so fun. What can I say? This is this is probably this might be my favorite ninja movie as all of all time. As much as I love American Ninja, four stars out of four stars. This is a hands down just ninja, you know, just extravaganza, start to finish. You know, you so many of you know little blips that are re you know written about action movies. It's like nonstop action. In a lot of cases, it's just a bunch of bullshit. I mean, this movie, I think, is just one of the biggest contenders for for that. I don't think there's ever been a quote, you know, about that written for this movie that I've seen. But if, if you were going to write a quote about it, I mean, that one could actually stand true to describe Revenge of the Ninja. I mean, it's just, it is, it is like when I watched it recently, it's like wall-to-wall -wall action. It's just like, it's almost like, it's almost too much, but I'm not complaining. The Ninja action and the kung fuery that that happens in in this you know over the course of this movie is just so freaking awesome and like i say even though the character of cho doesn't ninja suit up until the end of the movie you still got throughout the course of the movie brayden dressing up like a ninja and doing his own ninja stuff but even though you know it's not wall-to-wall -wall ninjas dressed up in ninja garb even just the kind of the martial arts action scenes that that take place throughout the movie and just the action that takes place throughout the movie is so fun on its own and I four stars out of four stars I can't recommend Revenge of the Ninja enough 
And now on to my review of the Blu-ray that came out in 2015 by the beloved, glorious Kino Lorber. Um, this is a, when this came out on Blu-ray, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Actually, I don't think I got it right away. It wasn't until later that I got it, but at any rate, I did end up with it, obviously. And, you know, this is a really good Blu-ray presentation. I want to say that some of the, possibly at the beginning, some of the red you know, belts or whatever that the ninjas are wearing come across more pinkish, but maybe they are pinkish from the day one, I don't remember, but, you know, obviously this is, uh, you know, obviously the best way to, to experience the movie on home video currently, and I gotta say, you know, the, the Blu-ray, I mean, it doesn't blow your ass out of the water, but I mean, this is just exactly pretty much how I'd have this film presented on Blu-ray. It's not, not a perfect print by any means, but it just adds to the the, the greatness and the, and the fun of the the transfer and you know it's, it's just it's just the perfect for me it's just the perfect source material perfect you know blu-ray presentation of this title you don't want it to look too shiny and amazing and this film obviously is never going to look that way nor should it but uh yeah this blu-ray for the image quality is i can really say is uh definitely the best way to experience this on home video the movie of course being uh, early 80s lower budget film it's just a mono track i don't have any issues with the sound no annoying hiss or, or audio issues that i can remember hearing that really stuck out looking at the special features here we can see audio commentary by director sam Furstenberg and stunt coordinator stephen lambert pretty sure I, I gave that i don't know if i listened to the whole thing but i know i started it years ago after i got the blu-ray and it's really really fun listening to sam Furstenberg. The Steve Lambert guy seems to be maybe possibly a little full of himself, but I guess if you're involved in, in this film, maybe I'd be full of myself as well, because after, you know, at the end of the day, this movie is so freaking awesome. This, this guy who's the uh, stunt coordinator is, uh, yeah, I guess he was that big, that, that one big ninja at the, at the beginning of the, the movie with the assassination scene. I always stuck out to me. It's like, yeah, that guy's a little too big and a little too white, uh, to be a ninja but it turns out that's the actual uh the stunt coordinator guy that does the commentary along with sam Furstenberg. so i guess i just as soon you know instead of having Furstenberg by himself or something i guess i just as soon have him be joined by stephen lambert as much as i guess it, he for me i mean stephen lambert gets a little annoying to listen to but the commentary is uh, you know more or less interesting and all the anecdotes as i said i don't i can't remember if i heard the whole thing or not but what i heard was definitely fun as you can also see here, we've got an intro before the movie by Sam Furstenberg, behind the scenes photo gallery, and original theatrical trailer. So not the most jam-packed Blu-ray release in terms of special features, but hell, I'm not going to complain. I mean, Sam Furstenberg intro and commentary and, uh, you know, behind the scenes photo gallery and that really cool trailer being included makes this an all-around really, really cool Blu-ray package. One of the things I'm not crazy about Kino is their disc art can be relatively boring and bland. I just as soon have the classic cover art on the disc, but Kino has different ideas, as can be evidenced right here. Guess that pretty much does it for my movie slash Blu-ray review of Revenge of the Ninja. I can't recommend the movie enough, and it's a highly recommended Blu-ray as well. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, we'll catch you on the next video!